Hello guys and welcome to the new studio and welcome to 2023. I got the V-Core 98 here, compliments of Quartzide. They called me on my way down to Indian Wells, where I was very excited <laughs> to be able to hit, by the way, obviously. And they called me on my way down, told me that they have a pre-release demo of this V-Core 98. They caught me just in time. I stopped there on the way down to Indian Wells. So my first hit with this racket was on the very Indian Wells tennis courts that you'll see in some playtest footage. So I'll talk about this racket, I'll alternate between me and the playtest footage, also me. But I got my buddy Vern on the other side who I was lucky to run into because what I did was I called the front desk at Indian Wells once I got there and told them my hitting level and if they know anyone that I could hit with around that level. And they told me, you know what, somebody called and was looking for the same thing so I'll see if I can set the two of you up. And that's what they did. So me and Vern got in touch and we hit and it was Great tennis, really good tennis. So lucky to have run into him. I guess Palm Desert, which is where Indian Wells is, not the biggest tennis town, despite the fact that they have that tournament there. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's like a large, wealthy retirement community who has money to play on tennis resorts. It's not next exactly like the type of place where a lot of next gen or higher level tennis players are coming out of. So I was lucky, I think, to run into him and be able to get some rallies in with him. So really cool. My first hit with this racket was also my first hit ever at Indian Wells with a tennis partner around my level. We had some great rallies, so let's get into that. So right away, I think when you look at this racket, you will see that the 10 and two area is wider. That is something that they have advertised as a change. So that's a very obvious change. Cosmetics are different. The paint job is different. Although I don't know what to say about that too much. Uh, personally, I feel like I probably like this paint job about as much as the last one. It's different, but not in any way that makes me think I like it more or like it less. However, I do think that cosmetically it is interesting that the grommet is red. I think that's cool. So the grommet as well as the bumper guard is red. So that's just nice to have that blend in. I mean, that's that's a pretty big cosmetic change, I would say. The string pattern is a little bit more dense. I'll pull up a picture here where you guys can actually see side by side if you line up the sweet spot area of the two rackets, you will see that. Now try to follow me here because this is going to demand a little bit of your attention, but I have the crosses lined up towards the top area of the sweet spot. And you can see that because I've drawn a line across from one side of the racket crosses to the other side. So you can see as you work your way down the crosses exactly where the crosses on the other rackets start to deviate. Basically, you will see that as you move down each cross on the newer generation of V-Cores, the older generation continues to be a little bit more open towards the bottom half of this sweet spot area. So I think this picture showcases exactly where and by how much the crosses are actually drilled in such a way that the string pattern is a little bit more dense, if you will. So Yes, they're both 16 by 19s, but the drill pattern is different, and I favor this drill pattern to the last generation of V-Cores. My favorite thing about a denser string pattern is that the strings should last longer. There's a lot of 18 by 20s actually that are more open in the sweet spot. That Head Speed Pro, that one's actually more open. If you compare it side by side around the crosses to a racket like this, or even the E-Zone, also a 16 by 19 racket, you'll see that in a lot of areas, the crosses are actually further apart. So it's kind of surprising that a 16 by 19 can actually have a more dense drill pattern than a lot of 18 by 20s out there. And I just like that you're gonna get more life out of your string bed because I break strings every five or so hits, which is pretty frequent. That means I gotta string a racket for myself about once a week. And yes, I'm hitting with durable strings. This is 16 light Selenko Hyper G, which is what Quartzide gave it to me with. And yeah, on a day where the weather's actually good, or I should say like a week and I'm hitting almost every single day, this is gonna last me about a week. But in an 18 by 20 or a more dense drill pattern like this, I might get an extra two days or so out of it, which is a big deal for me. I mean, that's almost, 50% more life that I get out of the string bed. So I always appreciate a more dense drill pattern. So is this still a spin friendly racket? Absolutely, absolutely. Is it just as much as the last one? Honestly, I don't notice a difference, but I do notice that I'm playing this racket in stock form. You're gonna see in some of the shots here that I sort of struggle to generate the massive amounts of spin that I'm able to with my E-Zone. And despite the fact that the E-Zone is not a spin marketed racket, I think I'm able to generate more spin with that because one of the first things I do when I sort of commit to a racket is I will add a leather base grip. In the case of the E-Zone and a lot of my favorite rackets, I will put VT Advantech on there and they make a cushion grip and a leather grip. Uh, amazing base grips, by the way, you should absolutely check them out. 
that will add about 10 grams in your handle. This is not a scientific way of, of grabbing the racket or proving much, but basically you add a little handle weight here and it'll make it so that the racket actually tilts like this a little more. So I think what that does is it changes the center of gravity or the balance in such a way that it's more tilted towards your wrist area. Despite the fact that the racket is now heavier, someone might want to argue you're going to get less spin because the whole racket's heavier, it's going to be harder to move. The pivot point is actually moved down and I think that really assists in having leverage over the racket in the areas that you want to. Now this is a very play style dependent thing. I think doing this might not work for the flatter hitters, but again, there's just, everyone is so different in how they play. For me personally, I'm, ab I'm absolutely able to generate more spin on the E-Zone because of that. So it'll be interesting to see if I put a base grip on here of my choice, how it's gonna compare to the E-Zone, the way I have it set it up in terms of spin. So yeah. You'll see that in a couple shots. Some of my shots kind of fly out that I know would have, I would have been able to pull in with more spin that I could have accessed on the E zone, but that I wanted to play this racket in stock form. So honestly, this racket, I got it from Quartzsite. It was strung with Hyper G 16 L around 53 pounds. I think that's probably about right. And the only thing that isn't stock about this racket is I got my isn't dampeners in here, right? You can check that out at isn't.co on Instagram. And I have a vocal V dry overgrip on here. So this maybe adds like five grams to the handle or something. And you know, I do a little funky modification here on the grips, maybe adds another gram or so. So if this was set up to my taste, absolutely it would be more headlight. I just wanted to say that, but I wanted to review the racket in stock form as much as possible to give it an honest and unbiased opinion. So on contact, I think this racket does feel more stable. I imagine that you're getting a little bit more stability out of the wider head around the 10 and two area. I imagine also that that opens up the sweet spot a little bit. So I do feel like the sweet spot is a little bit more generous and that could just be because of the stability from the 10 and two. There's a lot of, you know, little changes on this racket, all the variables combine, but that would make sense that these changes would have those effects. Other meaningful changes on this racket, well, the throat design's a little bit different. I think that this throat design is going to offer a little bit more stability. It's got kind of a more squared shape. I think it's going to be able to resist torsional stresses a little bit better than the last generation. So maybe that's another reason that this racket actually feels a little more stable through contact. There's a lot of little reasons that could be why, but that could also be another one. Overall, I'm going to have to say that I would definitely choose this racket over the last generation of V-Cores. And other than the little issues I've had generating spin with this racket, which again, I'm mostly blaming to the balance of this racket in stock form, which is something you can adjust. I mean, this is a light enough racket that it's somewhat of a platform racket. If it's too headlight, you can add weight and it'll still be playable. You can just add weight to the whole thing. You can add weight to the handle like I did. You can add weight everywhere, just the three and nine. You can do a lot like to tweak this racket to your preferences. So that's another thing about rackets like this. I think they're great because they leave you a lot of room to personalize your racket. And Yonex is really good about quality control, right? So you're gonna get this racket, it's gonna be a lot closer to spec than a lot of other brands will be. But if a racket's light enough, you can always do a lot to correct some of the differences more easily than you could on a racket like, I don't know, a lot of tour versions of rackets or pro versions of rackets. They're already kind of at a lot of people's weight limits or past their weight limit, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of rackets that are that heavy that have other qualities that make me want them, but I just can't because they're too heavy. I can't really make them play the way that I want to, but maybe I want that string pattern or something like that. There's a lot of 18 by 20 rackets out there that I think would be really good at generating top spin if they were a little bit lighter so that you could customize the balance and twist weight a little differently. So it's unfortunate to me as someone that really wants a racket with a denser drill pattern and just can't get that because racket companies decide to make 18 by 20s or tour versions of rackets so heavy off the bat. So all good, like I said, this drill pattern is actually pretty dense anyway, and the weight is well within range for a lot of players to be able to customize it to their liking, especially if you just wanna add handle weight, which I think is off, often really a good idea. So that's the gist of my review. Would I recommend this racket for you? Yeah, if you're the type of player that has a lot of different answers to a lot of different situations, I think a racket like this is very versatile. And as I was saying, it's in a weight spec where you can customize it and tweak it to be a little bit more this or a little bit more that in a lot of different directions. If you want it to be more stable, which it already actually kind of is, you could add weight at the three and nine and it's not gonna put too much weight in the head. You can make this more of a spin monster racket if you want to by putting weight in the handle, which is probably what I'm gonna do if I continue to hit with this racket. You can just add weight overall. 
if you want this to be more Tor spec. I think just being able to do all of that means that this racket is accessible for a lot of different players. And I mean a lot of different players based on differences in level, but also differences in play style. This is a very versatile racket. It's pretty comfortable. It's not too stiff either. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. I enjoyed this racket on volleys. I had a couple volleys that were just sort of bad, but I'm getting used to another racket. I had some good volleys in there too. Overall, I feel like this racket did everything well. It was stable enough that I felt like I was able to hit good backhands with it. I had no complaints on serve. The only complaint I could really find about this racket is my struggle to generate spin, but that comes from the balance. I'm sure, I'm sure that it does. So I'd probably like this racket even more if I put one of those VT Vantech leather grips on here. So if I continue to hit with this racket, that's probably what I will do. So we'll see. The weather honestly is keeping a lot of people indoors right now where I'm at. So I'm not really able to get some tennis in these days, sad, but I'll tell you this, I'm very, very excited to try the V-Core at 95, and I should have my hands on that very soon. And I'm excited about that because of the denser drill pattern. I'm not actually sure that I'll like the racket as much as I like this one, but I want to. I want to like it more. So that's where my bias is. We'll see uh, how the racket actually gets along with me. The last generation of V-Core 95s, I don't know. I mean, I did a review on it. Uh, I'd have to like it more. I like this probably more than the last V-Core 95 also. So. We'll see. It's a different racket, uh, but I will try to like it. And I will definitely make a video on the new V-Core 95 as well. As soon as I get my hands on one, I will let you guys know. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, and you can follow me on my Instagrams as well. I got my clothing brand and my, pers my tennis channel. And I also got affiliate links now with Courtside, which means you guys can help me out if you want to. I do get a small commission on any sales that happen. This is a nice mom and pop tennis shop. They got two locations here in the Sacramento area. Check them out if you're ever around. They're a really nice, legit tennis shop. They got so many rackets and demos. They're great. Their staff is knowledgeable. I really recommend stopping by if you want to check out a tennis shop in this area. And if you want to help me out at no cost to you, you can go grab a racket or shoes or whatever you want. Anything over $50 your total order will ship for free. So grabbing something from Courtside Tennis, maybe you guys are in the market for a new racket or something. It's a great way to help me and the shop out at the same time at no extra cost to you. So link is down below in the description, check it out. And yeah, shout outs to them again for the demo. Really appreciate you guys, appreciate my viewers and my subscribers. And yeah, before my battery dies, I'm gonna call it right there. So I will see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned. Hope you're enjoying the weather out there. Um, I'm kind of waiting it out. So, all right, I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye for now.